thank you for tuning in on a Friday and let's continue with one of my favorite topics this entire semester, the brain. Now, here is the brain. So we talked about substructures of like the diencephalon, the brainstem, and the cerebellum. So yeah, the cerebellum over here, but this big part right here, the cerebrum. So I'm devoting pretty much a whole lecture to the cerebrum, the star of the brain right now. So th this is what makes you intelligent. This is what you're hopefully using during the exam. This is what you use when you're doing conscious, th conscious thought, making decisions, your personality. This is all in your cerebrum. All right, so complex thinking as well. And then also interpret sensory information as well. So the thing is that, and it also does voluntary movement. So it does a lot of things and stores your memories as well. Okay, so then there's gray and white matter in the brain. So you also have gray and white matter in the spinal cord, but notice that how the gray and white matter is arranged in your brain. So notice that the gray matter is on the superficial, the outer surface of the brain, whereas the white matter, this is on the inside of the brain. And whereas the, in the spinal cord, what do we have there? Well, notice that the gray matter is on the inside and the white matter on the outside. So the gray matter there and the white matter there. And thank you for helping out. Um, your other st fellow students in the chat, by the way. All right, so remember your gray matter, this is the dendrites in your cell bodies, but why does it make, why is it different color than the white matter? So remember that white matter is mostly made out of axons cover, covered with that substance we call myelin. So that myelin is that kind of off-white fatty substance. So yeah, that's why gray matter, that's the cell bodies, the, the meat of the neurons, whereas the white matter, those are those long axons that are covered with myelin. Now in the spinal cord, what do we have? So again, we have the gray matter in the middle. So the gray matter, the cell bodies, the dendrites. And then we had it arranged where all the cell bodies uh, uh, were arranged toward the inside of the spinal cord. Whereas you had all the white matter toward the outer edges of the spinal cord. So again, that's why in, typically in the spinal cord in a cross section, you have gray set matter in the center and white matter on the outside. Whereas in the brain, again, we still have neurons, but now we have it flipped around. So now you have all these neuron, neuronal cell bodies on the outer surface of the brain, whereas you have all the axons reaching toward the inside of the brain. So this is why you have all that, or most of the gray matter in the brain, or the cerebrum, on the outside, whereas on the inside you have the white matter. So again, it's kind of flip-flop between the spinal cord and the brain. You still have neurons, but they're arranged differently. All right, so here's the cerebral cortex. And again, the gray matter on the outside compared to the gray matter on the inside in the spinal cord. So this is what your cerebral cortex is, this entire layer of gray matter. So notice that it's not a completely smooth layer. Notice that there's all these folds, so it kind of go, has all these hills and valleys and all these little folds in the gray matter. So this is what we call our cerebral cortex. And this is where you have all these complex thought patterns. So things like decision-making, planning things, uh, doing complex pro homework problems, and emotions as well. So or, or actually, emotions are linked to that, but then we'll go get to that soon. So consciousness, what makes you aware? What, what are you using in viewing this lecture right now? And also when you speak, I mean, you're using your cerebral cortex and think just like complex thought in general. So the cerebral cortex, this is the one that does all the complex thinking you're thinking about. It's also very important for memory as well. Okay, so here's a picture of the brain and here's it on the lateral view and here's a picture of a human brain. Actually, it's on the smaller size side, but it's probably a human brain. Okay, so what you can't see in the lateral view, you can't see this longitudinal fissure. So longitudinal fissure is pretty obvious, as you can see, it goes straight down the middle, the sagittal, mid-sagittal line of your brain. So it divides your brains into hemispheres. So just like how you have longitude dividing the hemispheres uh, of your, the globe, same with your brain. So you have a left and right hemisphere divided by the longitudinal fissure. And then you have something called the central sulcus. So remember sulcus and fissure in bow marking. So sulcus is shallow and not as prominent, whereas a fissure is much more deeper. So the central sulcus is a line, it is a fold, but it's not as deep as the longitudinal fissure typically. And then you have something called a lateral sulcus and fissure. So you can only see the left side right here. There will be a right one if we were able to flip around this brain and see this side of it. 
But yeah, the lateral soul kiss, sometimes call, it's called the lateral fissure, but it is another fold within the cerebral cortex. Okay, so let's do a little drawing activity. So if you have your paper and a pen, you can get it out. And I'll just show you a real quick and dirty sketch. And it's kind of, if you have the anatomy coloring book, it's slightly based on that as well. Okay, so what we have here, so let's draw it. So first draw a bean and then draw another half. So now we have our two halves of our hemisphere, two hemispheres. And then we draw a central sulcus. And now we're going to draw a lateral sulcus on the left side of this brain. And what I'm going to highlight here is the longitudinal fissure. Again, this divides your brain into left and right hemispheres. Longitudinal fissure. And let's, let's label the other sulci. Okay, so this is our central sulcus. So again, even though it has central in the name, don't get confused with the longitudinal fissure. And let's label one of the lateral sulci. So again, we can't see the right one because it's on the other side that's hidden. But yeah, this is our lateral sulcus. In some textbooks, it's called the lateral fissure. And now we're going to label four major lobes of the brain. So the frontal lobe is in the front, just like the frontal bone. And then we have our parietal bone. Ooh, that doesn't look right. Let me, let's see, erase, yeah. Yeah, yeah, parietal lobe. <laughs> It's Friday, it's been a long week. But, and then there's sometimes it's called a parietal occipital sulcus that kind of, but I don't think it's actually labeled in your book, but don't worry too much about it because I don't think either OpenStax or that has that labeled. And then you have your occipital lobe, just like your occipital bone in the back of your skull. And then you have your temporal lobes, just like your temples are on the side of your head. Okay. That's a quick and dirty schematic on how to draw the different lobe or the major lobes and the major sulci and fissures of the brain.